The iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max were the first Pro iPhones to be launched all the way back in 2019, and while they are approaching almost four years old, they don't feel like it, not even close. They're still fantastic smartphones, and today we're going to talk about exactly why that is. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and last year I did do a video on the 11 Pro that I think is still pretty relevant, but it does have 2022 in the title, so of course it no longer gets views. That being said, it's going to be a bit more detailed than this review specifically, so if you'd like, I will link that in the description, but that video does use the old old pricings and Apple's lineup, including the iPhone 11, which is no longer being sold by them. So we're going to be giving more of a general overview rather than the most in-depth video ever. How do the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max hold up in 2023? And could they even be worth buying? Spoiler, they're great and pretty good value. Part of the issue with doing videos like this yearly on phones is how fast the overall tech landscape shifts and how a phone that was top of the line yesterday can so easily be old news and obsolete today. Luckily, however, when it comes to iPhones, after Apple's done selling them, the only thing that really changes for the next few years tends to be the price. So when it comes to performance and iOS support, you'd be hard pressed to notice much difference. Smartphone tech is advanced to the point where software is struggling to keep up with the hardware rather than vice versa, and it means phones like the iPhone 11 Pro can still provide reliably smooth experiences on the latest version of iOS available both right now today along with the foreseeable future. The major key exception here tends to come with bad battery life or bad battery health more accurately. If you go to settings, battery and battery health, you can see the percentage of the original capacity still usable. Once it's down to around 80%, you may experience issues and that's when you want to start considering going to Apple for a battery replacement or just upgrading to a new smartphone altogether. But assuming the health is still pretty decent and the phone itself isn't giving you any issues as hardware definitely can degrade as it's used over time, then something like the iPhone 11 or the 11 Pro is going to likely still be a shockingly impressive performer when it comes to the vast majority of use cases. This is a phone you shouldn't really need to upgrade from yet, assuming the hardware is still holding up for you. Though just because you don't need to upgrade doesn't mean that you may not want to upgrade. The newer the iPhone, the better the camera, and you've got another half dozen improvements that come along with it, even if practically speaking, the 11 Pro isn't all that different from my iPhone 14 Pro. So we're going to get into the photography here, along with the general experience. But as mentioned in the intro, my last video is more focused on every small detail and will give you a good impression of whether or not it's a device you want to purchase, or even keep if you're already using it. This video is to more just update in pricing and reiterate that not a whole lot has changed. This is still an amazing phone that by no means feels nearly four years old, and it most certainly may even be worth buying. Apple no longer sells it certified refurbished, unfortunately, at least as far as I can tell, so this means we need to turn to the second hand market for the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max, and prices are going to vary wildly depending where you're looking and how lucky you are, honestly. If we go to eBay.com, the smaller 64 gig 11 Pro seems to average around 300 US dollars for a model in pretty decent condition, either pre-owned or refurbished. That's honestly not too bad considering how great this phone still holds up and how it really doesn't feel its age. Even cheaper can be found the iPhone 11, which lacks the telephoto zoom lens and stunning OLED screen, but it's a fantastic budget option if neither of those features stand out to you. This 11 Pro comes in 5.8 inches and 6.5 inches, which is notably smaller than the newer Pro models, those having the base size start at 6.1 inches, which is the size of the iPhone 11, just in a much slimmer form factor. Going to the 6.1 inches as the smaller size was a big upgrade for me, as the 5.8 inch iPhones were just a bit too small, but the 11 Pro Max that I got was just a bit too big. So the 6.1 inch 14 Pro that I have right now is about perfect. If you're not as picky as me with size though, then it's a good opportunity to get a screen as good as any other 60 Hertz OLED panel, including the one in the iPhone 14, and at a price nearly only a third as high. The screen is great, and so is the camera system, sort of. It's reasonable to want an upgrade from this now, as smartphone photography has been the main focal point in newer models on all sides of the Apple to Android spectrum, and there's some serious raw potential in the 48 megapixel 14 Pro camera that just isn't achievable here. But if you need a camera for what most people need one for, point and shoot, taking pictures whenever and wherever you want without a second thought, the 11 Pro still offers consistently great shots with a range of versatility that's only obtainable with a three lens setup. We're talking the 12 megapixel 0.5 time zoom ultra wide, 12 megapixel normal wide lens, and then the two time zoom 12 megapixel telephoto. Any of these lenses can be used to fit whatever situation required, and you know you're going to end up with a pretty decent photo regardless. Mind you, the main lens is still definitely the best one, and again, there's been a pretty big jump in the hardware and software behind all of the computational photography that just isn't available in a four year old smartphone. But looking at these photos, are you honestly going to tell me the 11 Pro doesn't hold its own? I would argue it absolutely does. You don't need to be a photography expert and point out all the little 
things, they're still decent photos. And even in less than ideal situations, as you enter indoors and poorly lit areas, the 11 Pro does the job. Night mode was new with the iPhone 11, and it allows you to take a longer exposure to get more light in your image, even in practically pitch black situations. Often these photos aren't going to look too good, and low light has gotten some serious upgrades over the past few years, but having the feature at all is good enough for me, especially considering Apple's cheapest iPhone, the 2022 iPhone SE, somehow doesn't have it. Meaning, yeah, the 11 Pro from 2019, as well as just the 11, will absolutely blow away the actually more expensive, if you're buying brand new, third gen iPhone SE. And it's not just in low light, but the vast majority of conditions. Plus, the SE only has one lens, and its display is the same old Retina LCD that was in the 2017 iPhone 8. It's about equivalent to the quality of a non-Pro iPhone 11 as well, just a lot smaller. You are missing 5G networking with the 11 Pro, but I mean, LTE is still widely used anyways, and depending on location, probably isn't much, if at all, slower for you. The SE is a good phone, but it's really, really bad value, and it's a good example of what makes a used or refurbished option like the iPhone 11 Pro so enticing, even in 2023, despite how bad Apple might want you to move on to something newer. And I'll admit, there's some decent value in something like an iPhone 13. Certainly not the 14, but the 13, where you do get a smaller notch, slimmer form factor, and better photography, albeit at the expense of the 2 times telephoto lens. That being said, if a 64 gig iPhone 11 Pro can be found for 300 US dollars, is a brand new 128 gig iPhone 13 for 700 really worth over double the price? The 13 mini is 600, and I mean, it's great if you like small phones, but my answer would be, generally speaking, if you're okay with buying used, I think I'd take the 11 Pro. Buying from the secondhand market has a lot of risks associated with it, but if it's something you're comfortable with, it's a good way to save some money. And I would say that going with the iPhone 11 Pro or a similar alternative is an absolute no-brainer. So yeah, the 11 Pro is still worth buying, and its stellar hardware display and camera really put on show the why and the how. The A13 chipset is still very fast and capable of anything you can imagine doing. Ultimately, this is running the same version of iOS that the 14 Pro is, and it's certainly not feeling slow or choppy, at least from my own personal usage. If it is a bit slow for you, I would check that battery health. And if that isn't it, you might want to try a fresh restore or cleaning up some storage space, as that can always bog things down. The 11 Pro is one of my favorite iPhones ever made, because it's solid and it gave a really big jump from the iPhone XS. The battery life got significantly better, the camera quality was a huge leap forward, and the overall package with the stainless steel frame, frosted glass, and three camera lenses really leave the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max feeling like flagship top-tier premium smartphones, even four years later. The phone's not going to be losing iOS support for a number of years, hard to pinpoint exactly when, but it will get iOS 17, and I'd personally wager it'll get to iOS 19 or so, given Apple's propensity for generous update timelines. Best of all, it's going to stay a smooth experience, at least for the time being, more than accomplishing the tasks for millions of users still claiming this phone as their daily driver. And so with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. A bit of a shorter look, just wanted to re-emphasize this phone's value and the prestige it still holds, despite it being the last iPhone from the 2010s. It's a real standout in Apple's recent sea of copy-paste pro iPhones, and there is a reason it has and will continue to hold up so well. It's just a great smartphone, and for roughly 300 US dollars, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find much better value anywhere else. Again, the link to my more in-depth video, as well as my buying guides for 2023, will be in the description below. It's a pretty good time to buy a used iPhone. If you found this video helpful or interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.